class is in session. Today we're gonna be teaching you how to free pour like a pro. So why do you need a free pour? Why do you need to learn how to free pour? Why do you wanna learn how to free pour? Because it looks cooler. <laughs> Reason <laughs> number one, hand. you don't look like, like a door. Okay. You're going to look more professional when you're pouring your drinks. Who likes to use a jigger? You're gonna look like an amateur. Free pouring will make you look like you know what you're doing. You gotta learn how to free pour so you can be fast like a ninja and do two drinks at the same time. When I'm behind the bar, I feel like an octopus. I'm always trying to do like a bajillion things at one time. This hand can be doing so much more than holding one of these. Pouring a drink and pouring the mixer, right? So that's gonna just make you faster, like a ninja. So you wanna be very accurate when you're pouring liquor. Why? Because your job depends on it, okay? You don't wanna over pour or under pour. Your customers are gonna hate you also if you under pour. And your boss, if you over pour, is also going to hate you and probably fire you. Getting an accurate pour is really important, especially when making cocktails. You wanna make sure that all the ingredients are the right amount to get that cocktail to taste exactly how you want it to taste. If you don't know, then all your freaking cocktails are gonna taste crazy. They're gonna taste different every single time. You don't want your customer being like, hey, this doesn't taste the same as last time that you made it. You're gonna look silly and not like a pro. You're gonna need four things to learn how to free pour. The obvious, a pour spout. Pouring without a pour spout, like you can't control this. Like, what was that? I don't know. A dummy bottle with water inside, a shaker or cup, it doesn't have to be a shaker, it could be any kind of cup. And you're also going to need a jigger. You see how it curves a little bit? I don't know if you can see that. When you're putting your pour spout on your bottle, you wanna make sure it is facing where you're pouring, right? So if you're a righty, you're gonna pour probably like this. So you wanna insert it that way. And that way, you're not like this, right? And then it looks also, it's just like, wow, what's that, right? Like, whoa, you gotta pour like this. That doesn't look very professional. So you're gonna wanna hold the bottle by the neck. It's gonna give you more control over the bottle versus like holding it like this or like the bottom of the bottle. Control it. Make it your bitch. <laughs> so I have my bottle by the neck. I'm going to loop it around so the bottle is straight up and down and that's going to make sure that the liquor is flowing. If you have it, you know, kind of like this, you notice like it's not flowing as fast and you really want like a good flow so that way you can keep count of what you're pouring. Now that you know how to pour, you're gonna wanna learn how to stop the pour. If you don't know how to do that, your drinks are gonna be really strong. When you're ready for it to stop, you're gonna wanna bring it down, swoop it around, and that's how you cut the liquor and you stop it from pouring. Basically, have our wrists like this with the bottle, and then we're gonna cut it and quickly go like this. It's important to cut the liquor when you're free pouring because if you do it slow like this, liquor is still pouring when you're done counting. You need it to stop when you want it to stop. So, pouring, down, cut. So another way to cut your pour, and this is my go-to way on how I cut the pour, you're going to get that flow going and then you jerk the bottle and it stops it. Why I like to do this is because it helps with speed when you're pouring multiple drinks. So if I'm pouring two cocktails, I'm going to pour one and then two. Just back and forth all day. Jerk, jerk. We're gonna start off by learning our one ounce pour. That is a four count pour. So you're gonna go one, two, three, four. Why? Why you may ask? An ounce has four quarters. So every quarter is a one count. Are you following? This will also help you with all your other measurements. And I'm gonna tell you why. Because you're going to need to know how to do a quarter ounce, a half ounce, three quarters ounce, an ounce and a half, and a two ounce pour. 
And what is this all divisible by? Quarters. Did I lose y'all? Maybe, I don't know, I lost myself a little bit there. Every single time I used to jigger back in the day, I would count in my head what an ounce was, right? So I would count it one, two, three, four until I got confident enough to take away the jigger. Count along with the jigger as you're pouring it about 30 times until you feel comfortable enough to free pour and test yourself. Now let's test out an ounce in our tin. So we're gonna swing the bottle around, count to four, and cut the bottle at four. One, two, three, four. Come out, you bro. So we're gonna do our half ounce pour now. It is a two count. Why? Because there are two quarters and a half. Very simple. One, two. Three quarters ounce is going to be a three count because there are three quarters, three count. Math, one, two, three. Three quarter ounce. How many quarters are in an ounce and a half class? Six. Six quarters are in an ounce and a half, which means you're gonna count to six. So simple. One, two, three, four, five, six. Perfect pour. So now we're going to be doing a two ounce pour, which is going to be an eight count. Why? Because there are eight quarters in two ounces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two ounces. 